We're at Alfred Galifant's uh, booth. Alfred, what's your background? Uh, as far as gun making goes? I've, uh, I've been a gun maker since I was 14 years old. I started off in Switzerland, spent many years in England, and have been in the United States for 20 odd years. Where are you located in the United States? I'm uh, north of Philadelphia in Bucks County, a place called Warrington. And how would somebody get in contact with you if they wanted to contact uh, you? Usually, no. I have never done any adver advertising. Uh, most of it's been by word of mouth. And I'm sure that somebody will know where I'm to be found, in, in preference to advertising. Do you have a telephone number that you'd yes, like to I be found? I do have indeed. It's 215-343-3974. And can you describe exactly what you're capable or willing to do for an individual? Uh, I've been fortunate in as much that I've been involved in all aspects of making a best quality gun, which by definition is a side-by-side -side shotgun, or if you like, a side-by-side -side rifle. The best of which remain to be made in England, but uh, I have made some here. And of course, all the repairs that would be involved on these guns. And that uh, keeps me very busy. In my type of in my type of gun making, this is very much a way of life. It is not a product. The product is almost incidental. Right? Now you have to live, you have to pay your bills, but uh, it is a way of life. And I've been living that way of life, as I said, since I was 14 years old, and I'm now 57. And I don't expect I don't expect I will change either. Uh, and I'm not unhappy. I'm not unhappy. I like to have a bit of time for myself, uh, but I do spend six days in, 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 in amongst my work. Now, do you, are you a hunter or shooter? Do you use guns? I do hunt, yes. Uh, my most favorite hunting would be, would be wildfowling, because wildfowling is one of the few types of hunting where you, you, you are hunting wild game. It's not something that's reared, uh, it's wild. Uh, and I have the occasional I have the occasional pleasure of going out shooting with some customers. Yes, but uh, the gun is more important. The work is more important than the hunting. Uh, I have an English side by side. Uh, this is quite old. It's about a hundred years old, and it does all the does all the shooting that I want, and, and uh, I expect it will last longer than I do, so yeah, there's a certain justice to all that. Uh, and if I live long enough, I'm going to make myself a gun, but, you know, I don't know whether I can afford $35,000 to spend on me. <laughs> Still loose. Get that rejointed. If I take the springs out, yeah, so yeah. That's well over. yeah, you're going to take the springs and you see daylight through. Yeah. So I would suggest that be rejoined. Yeah. You can hear it, you see. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That is a beautiful gun. Ed, Ed, that's the sweetest handling gun you've ever had. Yeah. Pick it up. Oh, you can feel the balance on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing doesn't feel like it weighs more than a couple of pounds. Yeah, that's very nice. All right. Well, I'll talk to you about it before I start on it. Once I get it back. Okay. All right. I'll give you my. Uh, you're going to give me your. I'll write, I'll write down my details. Yes, please. What do you think that gun will need? Uh, what it would be, is it your anticipation almost like a, a full rebuild or a close to it? No, it won't need a rebuild. One of the nice things about these guns is they can be rebuilt. There is no built-in obsolescence. Uh, some of these guns are now about 120 years old. They still work, right? and they can still be rebuilt. Parts can be made because nothing is ever standardized. It's all down to individuals, which makes it but the most important part about rebuilding, or if you like, repairing these guns, is to have the people capable of doing it. Right? Technology is not really of great use or help. 
because these guns were built with the most simple tools. Now, modern guns are built with a lot more machinery, but we no longer spend a thousand hours on making a gun. We spend 600 hours, right? And the other 400 hours are taken care of by machine. It doesn't make the gun any cheaper, but we need less people to make as many guns as we used to, uh, and we need less time to become skilled because we're, 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 we're reducing the amount of labor required. Uh, but with these guns, it helps to have been involved in the making because now you know how, what is needed. Uh, you know how to make the tools because with these guns, you always end up having to make the tools to do the repairs to repair the gun. Right? And what might be just sort of, if you were to look at a car where you take the part out that's worn, put a new part in, you now have to do the manufacturing of the part, the manufacturing of the tooling, and the fitting of the part. Right? So it all it happens in a different space. Right? Uh, and if you want to get involved, you need to you need to buy yourself a lot of tools. You have to make a lot of tools, and you'll make tools all your life. Right? And you make cutters which you use once, you throw them away because it's only just one job that's required in that cutter. And I might end up doing it on that gun, make one cutter, make one part, and then the tooling for it goes away, never to be used again. But he'll, he will shoot with that gun, or somebody will shoot with that gun, long after the four of us are gone. And that is actually quite amazing when you think about the amount of stress that is subjected to the metal. Uh, but there's no car that lasts that long. Uh, there's no nothing that lasts that long. I mean, a gun will. A knife gets worn out. You can't rebuild a knife. Right? Uh, tools get worn out. You can't rebuild a tool that's 100 years old and still use it. But guns still shoot. Guns still fire. That's amazing part. Yeah. Do you work alone, or do you have anyone anyone who works with you? I have had. Uh, in, in, in the beginning, I've had two or three young people that wanted to learn gun making. But they all gave it up after a year or two because young people are very impatient. Now, now I have a number of people that come to me for some time. They come to learn. Uh, and they're usually in their early 30s, late 20s, early 30s, which means they're past the first hurdle. Right? Because by the time they're 25 or 30 years old, it's likely that they're going to stay gun makers. So if you get to the age 16 or 17, they may finish their apprenticeship, and then they may go do something entirely different. See? And then you waste all that time and all your patience. And I think patience is a quantity that you only have so much of. Right? And nowadays, I, I, I give it to men that want to know, men that are interested, because I'm rapidly approaching an age where some of the things that I do are no longer known. There's very few people left. Particularly in America, but also in England, where all this comes from. Like uh, heat treatment, spring making, all these things. So I'll, 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 I will, uh, I will, uh, I will tell people if, 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 if they want to know and if they, if they are willing to spend some time with it. Yeah. There are there are masters, but they may be more in one particular field in the gun making. Right? It goes back to the sword mate. It goes back to the sword maker. You see, you have the sword maker, and you have the sword polisher, and then you have the tuba maker, and then you have the, the sheath maker, right? They're all masters, but not one of them will know all four things because that's not his business. But in this country, we are obliged to learn more because there are none of the other half dozen. So you have to, you know, all of a sudden you, 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 you come here, you're 30, 40 years old, you realize you must know the other things as well. And you have to learn it because otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. You become mediocre and indifferent. So you've got to, you know, there's a way it goes in life. You have to keep learning. The moment you stop learning, you're old. When do you go to the cutlery store and when do you go to the sword maker? That's the difference.
How many sword makers are there? How many cutlery stores are there? That's the difference. Uh, and like elsewhere, we don't have many sword makers here, we don't have many gun makers here. We have a lot of very capable people. Uh, but one of the problems in this country is there are very few places where you can learn to be a gun maker. We no longer have apprenticeships. Uh, people are very... You know, people don't want to spend five, ten years on learning. People have to earn money. Expectations are different here now than they were 30 or 50 years ago. Uh, and I'm also sorry to say that we don't have a lot of young gun makers. We're all getting very old. That's the problem.